Hello, hello, hello. How y'all doing? Good evening. Good evening. Let me turn this up. How y'all doing? Happy Wednesday. Welcome, welcome. Thank y'all for joining. I didn't hear what all these lights on. <laughs> hey, warm is good because it's cold outside. I don't know the temperature. I think it's in the 50s, low 50s, maybe 40s right now. But thank y'all for being here. Thank y'all for hitting the like button as y'all come in. Thank y'all for joining me again on Wednesday. Uh, welcome to everybody that's in here. God bless you. I know you could be anywhere. You could be doing anything right now. You could be eating. You could be eating a pot of gumbo right now, but you chose to be here with me. I guess you can still eat your pot of gumbo and still be here. But thank you all for being here. Always awesome to see everybody. Hey, how you doing, HT and Charlene out there in Florida? How, you, how the weather out there in, in Florida, Charlene? I don't know if it's cold as it is over here. I don't know. It might be. It might be. You never know. You never know. Hey, how you doing? Love, peace, welcome. Not free living. My wife, how you doing? Rizzo, how you doing? Jody Ann, welcome. Pink Girl Teachers, how you doing, sis? Welcome. God bless you. Uh, there's something I wanted to say. Forgot what it is. Oh, hold on. Before I get started, I'm I'm, 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 I'm going to remember. Don't worry about it. I'm going to remember. Because <laughs> Joy sent me a video earlier. I was cracking up, laughing. But I'm a, it goes in play with what I'm about to talk about. We talking about escaping the narcissist to save your life. Uh, it will change your life. So that's what we're discussing today. Let me see some great. Okay. All right. All right. I'm just, just seeing what's going on in the chat. So, yeah, that video was, it's cold out there, Charlene? Oh, okay. Well, she said it's cold in Florida, too. Hey, it's, I know it's a little nippy over here. I know it's snowing a little bit up north. One of my friends here is up in Chicago. He said yesterday, I think it was. Yeah, yesterday he landed in Chicago on Monday night. It started snowing on yesterday. How you doing, Tony Capers? Welcome, welcome. Thank y'all for joining. Thank y'all for being here. Hit the like button as y'all come in. You come in. Fine already. Hey, how you doing, Kingdom Mind Advances? Welcome, welcome. God bless you. Uh, Sky Anna. Aloha from Hawaii. Hey, okay. I've been to Hawaii. My wife, North Free Living, she was stationed in Hawaii when she was in the Army. I was stationed in Hawaii back. 96 to 99, Schofield Barracks. So, yes, I know you got some good weather over there in uh, Hawaii. <laughs> I know you got good weather over there. It might be raining, but it's going to be some good weather. It'll be better than what we got over here right now. But thank you all the way. And I just said a prayer that we get people to come in from all over the country and all over the world. And we got Hawaii in here. So, hey, there you go. <laughs> thank you for joining us. How you doing, Jasmine? Good evening. Good evening. Oh, she said, oh, Charlene said it's going to be in the 39. I think it's going to be like in the 30s, too, over here, to be honest with you. she says it's a little chilly over there. Hey, how you doing, Lyricists? I think I think across the country it's starting to get a little uh, chilly and stuff. Uh, yeah, I think it's getting a little chilly. How you doing, Kaya? Good evening. She said it's snowing in Ohio. Yeah, y'all can have a letter. I don't want none of that snow. I'm, I'm I'm good. I don't, I don't like the snow. I don't mind cold weather. I read it'd be hot, but yeah. Yeah, I don't. Nah, I'm not messing with the uh, <laughs> with the snow. Miss me with that. <laughs> I used to be in the snow sometimes though when I drove 18 wheelers, but yeah. Yeah. Oh, Sky Anna say, come on down. <laughs> say, we'd love to meet up with you folks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Snow for, uh, nah, miss me with that. So let me, hold on. Before we get started. I finally added. I was been supposed to add it. Uh, oh, uh, you follow, want to follow my wife, North Free Living? That's her Facebook, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, North Free Living. You want to get any of her shirts or any of her uh, mugs and anointing all and uh, what else she got on there? I can't, I can't I remember she got hats or not. I can't remember. I know she got shirts, mugs, and anointing all and some other things, but if you try, if you uh, want to get any of those, you can. Go to www.narkfreeliving.com. I got to take that clubhouse thing off. Let me do it right now so I won't forget. Hold on. I can edit right quick. I'm like, what is he doing? Because if I don't do it now, I usually forget. But she got a lot of a lot of merchandise, a lot of shirts. Usually I'm wearing some of her shirts. But uh, I decided to wear my army shirt today. <laughs> All right. I took it off, so there we go. Let's 
save. All right. So if you want to follow me, you know, Instagram, TikTok, faith based workplace. Also, hey, how you doing? Minda Mahogany, welcome, welcome. Tiffany Walls, welcome. I'm missing people coming in. Oh, we are messing with this uh thing. <laughs> oh, you're a truck driver in Hawaii, Sky Anna. Oh, okay. Yeah, I used to drive 18 wheelers. I had my hazmat, doubles and triples, tankers. I used to haul uh chemicals, you know, chemicals all across the country. Yeah, I know that CDL life. I know all about that class A CDL. <laughs> I know all about that. <laughs> cool, cool, awesome. Okay, and yeah, so I got my shirts. My let me put them up here while while I'm while I'm in here because I added them to the thing. So, uh, and thank you, Joy, for wearing the shirt. Joy had wore her, uh, she wore this shirt right here. Actually, she wore the knuck of you buck. Let me take this off. Hold on. She wore a knuck of you buck t-shirt. Like I said, you can get that off of www.faithbaseworkplace.com. See, I got it scrolling for you down there at the bottom. Joy had one of those shirts. Hey, how you doing, Sahari? Y'all welcome. God bless you, brother. Thank you for being here. Joy had one of these shirts on the other day. I got one. I couldn't find my shirt. I got to find it. Uh, yeah, so if you want to get your knuck of you buck, you can go to www.faithbaseworkplace.com. If you want to get, uh, what other shirt we got? If you want to get Narcissist Abuse Survivor. You can get one of these shirts. Hey, how you doing, Debbie? No, welcome, welcome. Uh, you can get one of these shirts, Narcissist Abuse Survivor. And then also, if you want to get Parental Alienation is Real, y'all might have seen me wear this shirt. You can get this shirt as well, Parental Alienation is Real. You can get this shirt as well, exclusively on www.faithbasedworkplace.com. Got to start, you know, putting y'all merch out there. I've been talking about it, but I said, let me add the shirts, you know, to the thing that wherever you see them. Lyrics say you got to get that shirt. That's that's to go to war gear. Yeah. Yeah. Lyrics, go get you a knuck of you buck shirt. <laughs> get you a knuck of you buck shirt, fam. <laughs> yeah. Go get you one. I got to get I got to get me another. I'm going to give me another color or something. Man. You know, do my little how they do that little razzle dazzle. Make it special. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. Let me scroll back up. Two more announcements. Domestic violence. You know, I always say this. 1-800-799-SAFE, 1-800-799-SAFE. My wife put it in the uh, in, in the uh, thing as well, in the comment section, my uh, website, you want to get some of these shirts. Uh, this is what you're dealing with domestic violence for men and women. And also, I found this new, I just go I Googled this earlier. You know, usually got that 1-800 number for national suicide prevention, like, like well, national suicide prevention. But now they calling it National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, and they got a three-digit number. It's 988. So if you're dealing with, you know, thinking about suicide, anything like that, the number is, is a three-digit number. It is 988. I think you still can call the 1-800 number that we used to always put out, but now they have a number is 1-8. I had to Google this a few times and make sure that was right, but it says right. So uh, before you do anything, you know, make sure you call that number and, uh, yeah. So, yeah, so my wife got the number, yeah, or text 988, yeah, 800-273-8255. I thought that was cool. You can uh, call that number, that 988, or text it. It's pretty cool. And if you want to join the channel, you want to do see some exclusive videos, which I just dropped a video today. Matter of fact, this is the video I dropped. Some of y'all might have seen it that I dropped for the faith-based workplace members only. This staying safe after abuse. It was like a 10-minute video that I dropped uh, today. They get exclusive videos, so if you click the little join button, you can actually join the channel and you can get exclusive videos. You get exclusive uh, comments and, and messages and things like that. And matter of fact, when I, when I take pictures, it'd be pictures that I won't post anywhere else, but you'll see the pictures right here exclusively if you join the channel. So if you want to join the channel and see some of that stuff, you can do that. Check out my video if you're not part of the channel. Or if you are part of the, the member only, go check out that video after this live, staying, staying safe after abuse and notice i didn't just say narcissist abuse because abuse come in many different forms so i want to make sure that i'm putting it out there that you can go you know what i'm saying check these things out and watch that video i know a few of y'all checked i know lyricists and a couple other had checked it out i think tiffany had looked at it so yeah yeah jody and say <laughs> oh, let me go in the comments right quick. hold on let me see let me see let me see jody and say cool i need that one i wore my cbu university shirt yesterday Hey man, and Shannon also, you know, she's been doing CB University at two uh uh sessions or seasons. I don't know what you call it. I think sessions. Let's go with sessions. She had two sessions. Uh how you doing, Vanessa Evers? Welcome, welcome, good evening. Uh she had two sessions, so she just finished up her live last week. They did an eight-week intensive course and uh they graduated. 
last week. So awesome, awesome, awesome. Let me see what else I got in the chat right quick. Let me see, let's see. Oh, Charlene said, I appreciate the info. No problem. You know, we're trying to trying to stay up to date with different things that's changing around here. But back to what I was talking about before I get started. Back to what I was talking about. Charlene say, yes, good video. We need reminders. Amen. 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 Back to what I was talking about. Joy shared with me a video on TikTok. <laughs> it ain't fun. It, no, it is funny. It's kind of funny. I was just telling Shannon about it before I went live. So before I even get into the message, I just want to talk about this video because this video is about that I'm about to do the live. It's about escaping the narcissist. I'm not saying the, the guy was a narcissist. You can listen to the story. I don't know. I, I don't know. But either way it goes, it's a crazy situation. And this is how people end up in narcissist abuse situations time and time again. Yeah, Jasmine, they got a CBU t-shirt. You got to go to www.narfreeliving.com. They got a CBU uh, University, Chain Breaking University shirt. Uh, it's in go. It's pretty. It's pretty. Yeah. It's over there on North Free Living. She got, she got them over there. <laughs> uh, Turn this off. Watch doing. Okay, there we go. So the video that that, that Joy shared with me, basically a uh, uh, a woman, a female. She she met a, a a young man. I don't know the ages or anything like that. Uh, basically, she met a man, and uh, Joy, I got my buzzer, so I'm ready. So every time I say something, I'm gonna hit the buzzer. <laughs> I'm gonna hit the buzzer. I got to. Let me put the. Uh, hold on, let me put this up here. This is what we're talking about. And let me change this so I get all in. Let me take this off. Let me take this off. All right. All right. We're good. All right. So basically, the young lady, she met a young man on the Internet. Uh, she didn't say where there was a, a dating site or whatever. I don't know. She met him on the Internet and the guy was reading the stuff. He's, he's reading the email, emails from different women that came in. Anyway, she met the guy uh, on the Internet, invited him to her home. He came to her home. That was strike number one. It's not baseball. So we're going to have four or five strikes. I don't know. So she invited him to the house. This joker shows up to the house and just standing outside. She said she looked out the window and she said, well, maybe he parked his car. Nah, he ain't have a car. <laughs> so he, he convinced her to drive. So she said, OK, I'll drive. She drove. They went out to go eat. Say everything was going good. I guess they had a conversation or whatever. And when the bill came in, the you know, the waitress or waiter brought the bill in. She looked at him and said, you go get that. He said, well, you invited me to Jersey. I thought you was paying. <laughs> so I don't know how much the bill was. They didn't say how much the bill was. I don't remember. But she paid the bill. <laughs> Come on, man. First day you just met this joke and you paying the. <laughs> Told you I have a bunch of strikes on this one. So she paid the bill. They get ready to leave. Obviously, she had to drive because she the one drove. He said he wasn't ready to go home. She took him to a bar, y'all. She took the man to the bar. Now, being she's she's intelligent enough to know that she's the designated driver, so she did not drink. This joker had, count them on my hand, nine drinks. Nine of them. Nine drinks he had. Nine drinks ladies and gentlemen i know y'all thinking like okay well nine drinks he obviously must have paid for that well if you was thinking that wrong it was a hundred i think what it was draw 154 dollars she paid for that too i can't make this up draw draw can back me on that i can't i can't make this up she paid she remember she just met him tonight <laughs> she just met him tonight so she paid she drove she paid for their meal and she didn't pay $154 for nine drinks that she did not drink. Oh, $145? Okay, $145 for the drinks that she did not drink. And you think that would be the end of the story, right? <laughs> Wrong. It's not. She goes home. I just knew she was going to drop this man off at the bus stop, his car, or something. I don't know. He said he needed to go in and use the restroom. <laughs> Why? Why? Why would you let him in? You didn't pay for the meal. You didn't drove. You didn't pay for nine. nine you didn't pay for some alcohol. She let him in to go use the restroom. He comes out of the restroom, sits on our sofa and said, listen, I want y'all to pay attention. I know everything else is shocking. Y'all trying to catch this. He said he was too drunk 
No, not to drive, but to catch public transportation. You too drunk to get on the bus or the track, man? Come on, bro. Come on, bro. That's what we doing. You can't, you can't. So you know what she did? That's where it gets worse. She let him sleep on her sofa. Remember, she just met him tonight. She just met him tonight. She let him sleep on the sofa. What you think happened in the middle of the night? I'll wait. Yeah, Deborah. Yeah. Yeah, it gets worse. Yeah. So in the middle of the night, this big burly joker goes into her bedroom and gets in her bed. Why shouldn't they have the door locked? I don't know. I don't, I don't know the lady. I don't know. But he goes on her bed. She said he was too big to move, so she just stayed on her phone until he woke up. He woke up at 4 a.m. That's not the end of the story. I didn't, I didn't freeze. I just don't know how to say this last part. That's not the end of the story. But he did apologize. I know what you're thinking. You thinking he apologized for not paying for the meal. He apologized for drinking too much. He apologized for coming in her room. If you guess all those, you would be wrong. He apologized for pissing in her bed. Yeah, I said it. I'm going to say it one more time. He, he apologized for urinating in her bed. He said he thought he was rid of that, like he got rid of that. He wasn't doing that anymore, but yet and still a grown man just urinated. I don't, I don't know. I, I can just finish the live right here. I don't, he urinated in her bed, a grown man. And that's what he apologized for. He didn't apologize for not paying for the meal. He didn't apologize for for getting drunk. He didn't apologize for not paying one hundred and forty five dollars for the alcohol. He didn't apologize for falling asleep on a sofa. He didn't apologize for coming into a room. He apologized for urinating on her mattress. Yep, yep, that'll do it right there. That's and you wonder why? Yeah, Kyle, I'm, I'm with you. Yeah, shake. Yeah, let me. <laughs> It's funny, but it's not funny. It's like, wait, what? Like this? This what we doing? Yeah. Uh, Larry says, I, I don't know. I, Pink girl teaches. My sister Joy shared that video with me not too long ago on TikTok, and uh, yeah. And I, I told Shannon about it. Shannon was like, what? And I was like, I, I was gonna do. I probably still do a reaction to that, but. Ben, I'm talking about escaping the narcissist. Like I said, I'm not saying the guy's a narcissist. I don't know the guy. But, yeah. What? Hold on. What George just said? Yeah, it was. <laughs> George just said he went from NY to uh, New York to New Jersey. That's $3.50 on a power train. He said she should pay because he traveled. Y'all heard that? I'm going to read it one more time. This young man got on a train. From New York to New Jersey, paid three dollars and fifty cent, not three hundred and fifty dollars, three dollars and fifty cent, half of another dollar. It ain't four. It ain't even four dollars. <laughs> he paid that and said she should pay because she invited him to New Jersey. <laughs> I hit the wrong one. My bad. Joe the answer, I have no words. I, I just, I, I, uh. <laughs> so the only thing I do is laugh. Man, what are you supposed to do with that? What? He paid $3.50. Made her pay to the meal. I had to guess the meal problem. Was, I don't know where they ate at. Joe, did it say where they ate? I don't think it said where they ate at, but wherever they ate at, I guarantee that might have been 60, 70 bucks. And then you go pay $145 for him to drink nine, whatever you drunk at the bar. And then this dude urinated in your bed? <laughs> man, come on, man. <laughs> come on, man. You're right, lyricist. He grabbed some change out the sofa. You know how you be having change? You know how they got them, them old sofas? They take all your change. He grabbed some change out the sofa. So I'm going to get me a free meal and I'm going to get drunk on her dime. Exactly, Joe. It was the first date and hopefully the last date, but yeah. Yep, that's how we starting this message off today. <laughs> that's how 
This is how we starting it off. HT is that nut hashtag nut house. I can't can't make this stuff up, man. Can't make it up. HT says like she should press charges. You know that's the thing. That's the thing. Maybe she should. I I, I, I don't know, Joe Dan. I don't know. I I just wanted to keep hitting my X button. I I don't know who in the world that I. Who gets on a train for three dollars and fifty cents on a first date as a man, and then goes out and tell the woman, "Hey, I thought you was paying because you invited me," and then proceeds to say, "I'm not ready to go home yet," and go get drunk at a bar, fall asleep on the woman's sofa, and then urinate in her bed. That's an eventful night. I, I, if I was her, I wouldn't want to go on a date for a couple of years. I just, I would buy a whole new mattress because we talk about talking about a grown man. So that's not a little baby. So they go all into the mattress. Yeah, I'm going to have to. Yeah, I need a new mattress. Brother, you you owe her a mattress. You owe her $145. You owe her another, probably another $100 plus tip for the food. And then you owe her whatever her mattress costs. I don't know, another thousand something dollars for the mattress. And then just for just cause, if I was a judge, hey, throw in another 500 just for embarrassment because, man, that was a, boy, I tell you, that's a night right there. That's a night to remember. Yes. Yes, Deborah, it is a true story. It is not made up. This is a this is a true story. True story. Hey, how you doing, Desiree Jackson? I, don't blame me. Yeah, I can blame my sister Joy for sharing that with me. Nah, I'm playing. I'm playing. Joy, that was a good. It's real. It's a real. This happens. She's not the only one this has happened to. That's the crazy thing. Other people have been in this situation. Might not admit it because we're in here laughing right now. It's not really a funny situation because it could have went left, you know, but thank God the woman uh, was able to make it out of that. But yeah, you have to pay attention. After coming out of narcissist abuse or coming out of any kind of abuse or just out there just dating, not knowing what's going on, you have to figure out Right, Tony. Right. That's <laughs> hopefully maybe she had, you know, how back in the day, you know, they used to put plastic on, on the sofas and stuff, and you couldn't sit on there. If you did sit on there when it was during the summer, your legs get stuck to the sofa. Hopefully, and I doubt it. Hopefully, she had plastic on her mattress. I doubt it because you would be sweating. You'd be sweating a lot if you had that plastic on the mattress. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, I'm just, I can't make this stuff up. Can't make it up. So now we can go ahead and start the message. I know people walking in like, what is he talking? Just telling the story about a woman that went on a date and at the end of the night, the man urinated on her mattress. You can fill in the gaps. All the time. I don't know. I don't know. I can't make this stuff up. This is, oof. I don't know. You know, it's a good time for, hold on. Remix. Let's get up out of there. <laughs> Let's get up out of there. <laughs> okay, Deborah. Deborah got a hand up. What you got, Deborah? You got a question? Hold on. I can I can take a question right now. What you got, Deborah? <laughs> I, can, I can answer. I think I can answer the question. I don't know. What you? <laughs> what you? What you got? <laughs> Man, hey. I don't know. I could I could do a whole comedy hour just based off of that. I promise I can. Hey, that's, that's, that's my favorite sound effect. <laughs> I wait to see if Deborah got. A, if you ain't got a question, Deborah, we'll keep on moving. I'm just, to, <laughs> I'm just, I'm trying to get my mind off of what I just discussed for the last, you know, ten minutes or so. This whole this 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 story. I, I don't know. I just, <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> I got you, brother. I see you. Say one more time. One more time. <laughs> Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Jody Ann, what? Jody Ann said a guy I'm going on a date with next is going to have to pass you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You got to go through Solomon and Shannon first. <laughs> 
Hey, you know what? We got to hit that one more time. <laughs> Man. Whew. This, y'all ready to get started? We ain't even got started yet. <laughs> 27 minutes. We ain't started nothing yet. But we're doing a lot of laughing, though. I guess that's a good thing. Yeah. Thank you for that, George. Thank you for sharing that with me. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to talk about that tonight, but might as well. We're talking about escaping the narcissist. Might as well just go down that path. Yeah. So if you missed it, you might want to go back and watch the first 10, 15 minutes of this live. You might be cracking up just a little bit. You might be confused a little bit. You might be a little bit like, Solomon, this, got, this can't be real. It is. It is. Yeah, that's how we start tonight on over here on Fake Base Wordplay. We starting off, you know, that ain't good. We start off laughing. Usually, you know, I try to slide in and get that later, but we start off. This ain't good for none of y'all. So if your sides end up hurting, let me put out my disclaimer. If your sides start hurting from laughing, or or you don't like sound effects, you might want to leave now. I'm just saying. Did you just say Pee Wee Herman? Lip? Lyrics just said Pee Wee Herman. Let me put that in. I didn't. I didn't say it. Lyrics. She just said Pee Wee Herman. Wow. Okay. That's what y'all doing. Y'all starting off climbing already. See, that's why we can't get into the message. <laughs> now nah, I'll play it. I'll play it. <laughs> I'll play it. And I had made a new intro. It's a, it's a small intro. I had made a new intro, but I didn't get into climbing. I'm gonna play it anyway, because I need to I need to get my mind back right. See, now you got my wife starting with the Pee Wee See, Pee Wee Herman. See, there y'all go. Let me uh <laughs> Let me play my new intro. It's only 10 seconds. I just made it earlier. I should have used Shannon to kind of made a better one, but here we go. So I can get we go after this. All minds are clear. We're gonna start the message. Y'all cool? We ready? All right. Okay, we back. Mine's clear. I'm not even thinking about what I just said. I am. I can't can't lie. I am, but I'm trying to move forward. <laughs> but I just created that like about an hour ago. Yeah, about an hour and a half ago. I created that. So yes, let's so here y'all. We we about to move HT. We're not talking about what we talked about. We we about to move forward. What's my message again? <laughs> but message, there you go. There you go, right there. Escaping the narcissist. That's all we need to know. That's all we need to know. Escaping the narcissist. Let's get into this one. Man, this is... One more time. <laughs> you ever say... No, I don't. <laughs> okay. Woo. We don't usually start like this. Let's, let's, get, let's get there. All right. So escape the north. Let's define escape. We know what escape means, but let's go. Hey, how you doing, Carmen? Welcome, welcome. Tiffany say, let's go. Yeah, we in it. So escape, break free from confinement or control to, to slip or get away as from confinement or restraint, gain or regain liberty. So escape has a few different meanings. And I don't think we 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 associate escape with leaving a narcissist. We, you know, we associate it with, you know, like breaking out of jail or different things like that. But when you think about it, you escape abuse, you escape neglect, you escape narcissist you really do but the truly escape you have to really put in work to get to that point because let's just be honest before you get to that point even thinking about escaping you first have to realize that you're in an abusive situation see we'll be in that situation for years and years not even understanding or knowing that this is abuse because we don't look at it like that maybe it's because like my wife said before, maybe it's because we fighting back. So we figure as long as we fighting back, it's not abuse. You, you standing up for yourself. But no, it's still abuse. And then the whole time we in it, especially if you came out of, as a child. I did a, a short about childhood trauma. Check that out. Uh, you have to understand that as a child, if you taught this from, a, from you know, five, six-year-olds, some of us younger than that. If you taught that from that age until adulthood, you're not going to recognize abuse but what it is, so therefore, your mind is not telling you you need to escape. Your mind is used to this. You're used to abuse. You're used to neglect. You're used to being called out your name. You're used to being cursed out. You're used to being love bombed and trauma dumped on. You, 
used to all these things. You used to financial abuse. You used to emotional abuse. You used to physical abuse. You used to it all. So therefore, when you get in a situation and you're in a relationship, you're used to it. I know I just said used to a bunch of time, but I want you to understand this because I was that person. You got used to certain things and you thought that's how things were supposed to go. It's not until you see somebody else situation or another relationship or something like that. Then you're like, well, hold on. This, this, this ain't, this ain't what I got at my house. This look different. You know, you know what I'm talking about? Let me break that down. You know, I like using analogy of story. It's like when you go spend a night to one of your friend's home and, you know, they mama tucking them to sleep praying with them they they, they 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 got you know snacks and food and in, in, in the stuff you know in, in the kitchen and stuff and you know you can see the love is what i'm getting and you see the affection and then the dad is actually in the household and and all these different things so you see all these things and you know you think about your house like well maybe the father not there maybe the mother not there maybe both of them not there maybe you a foster child, maybe both parents are there, but maybe they're both abusive. Maybe one of them are narcissists, maybe one of them not. Maybe both of them are narcissists. But either way, you can see how these two families don't add up. One of them, they got the love, they got the affection. They happy to see you come over there and spend time with their daughter. Say, hey, how you doing? I think Andrew, welcome, welcome. I just seen your metro pop up on TikTok. So you have to understand that. If I'm always used to seeing abuse and neglect and, and all these different things, it's not going to be any different when I become an adult. I don't care if you're 27, 47. It's not going to be any different when you become an adult because you used to seeing those things. So if you're trying to escape from a narcissist, first you got to realize, like I said, you have to understand and realize that you're in abuse in the first place. So if your mind doesn't tell you you're in abuse, how you know to escape? You know, that's why... I believe you get these people with relationships, they in there 20, 30, 40 years. They stay around their moms and dad or their brothers and sisters that have been abusing them for years and years because they don't recognize that this is a form of abuse. It's not until they see something different or they presented something different. Let me say it this way. Maybe you didn't catch what I just said. So if if let, let's use my sister. So if you always go on a date or you was taught, let's say you was taught these things, about date, you know, hey, a woman, you know, pay 50 50, whatever the case is. And every date you've been on, you know, the man, like the story I, I led with, the man saying that the woman, you know, invited him over so she should pay. So if you're already talking that, you don't think nothing of it. You see what I'm saying? It's not until you get with a, well, I'll go ahead and say it. It's not until you get with a real man and then the man actually is going to pay for the dates and, and, and court you and do all these different things, open your car door, open the door to the house and things like that. Then you're like, well, hold on. I'm not used to that. It's the same thing for me. Like you with a woman and she talking about, well, I don't cook and I don't clean. And you in there, you working a nine to five and, and you know, she's a house mom or a housewife, whatever you want to call her. And then you get home, there's no food cooked. The house stink. You got gnats flying around the house, flies on the food that is in the, I'm just saying. You like, well, hold on, man. Hold up. What is going on? But it's not until you get with a woman that, that know how to cook, know how to nurture or at least go buy some food or something, you know what I'm saying, where you got some kind of meal. Then you're like, well, no, this, this is different. But if you're always used to seeing certain things, how do you know different? It's like what I told y'all when I did that real estate class. See, I love going to look at million and two and three million dollar houses. And you're like, Solomon, why? No, I can't afford it. Not yet. But the reason why I like looking at it, because if I don't go look at it, how will I know that they have a shower that's Basically controlled by, it looked like a cell phone, like an app you can control, you know, turn the shower on and all these different things. How would I know some of the things that they have in these homes if I'm just looking at homes that's at a certain price range? You see what I'm saying? So if the houses I'm looking at, the houses I always lived in, is only 300000 And then all of a sudden, I go look at a house that's $2.5 million. I guarantee you the houses I've been staying in that's three fifty, not going to look like the house that's $2.3 million. I'm going to see some things that I have never seen before. Now, I know you're going to say, well, we see stuff on TV. Yeah, you do, but it's on the move and you can't see everything. You're looking at it on the TV. I'm going to look at it in person. So I'm going to get a different feel for and see things different. I'm going to see, hold on, man, this stove. I've never seen a stove. Like I told them in my real estate class, i never seen a stove with Wi-Fi until I went to that $2.3 million house. The stove 
had Wi-Fi. Now, don't ask me how it worked. I don't still couldn't figure that out. But I know you can hit the thing and you turn the knobs and it lit up and made it like a like a noise, like a uh, like a truck, like doom, doom, doom. And I'm assuming you can hook your phone to it. And then, yeah, a stove with Wi-Fi. But again, if I don't go look at these things, how will I know? I don't know these things are out there. I'm just not just going to pop in my head that these things are out there. So again, how do we escape something that we don't know we're supposed to be escaping? So again, escape, break from, break free from confinement or control. So you got to realize that the narcissist is all about control. So if they can control you, then they go have you in confinement. You wonder why I always say they move you off to rural areas and get you away from your family because they're trying to control you and have you in confinement. I didn't make this up. This is a Google uh, definition, but it goes in what I always say. They put you off in a rural area. They move you to another city, get you away from your family so they can control you and have you in confinement. You think it is a good thing because the man bought you a brand new house. You think it's a good thing because he buy you purses and, and, and diamonds and earrings and all these different things. You think it's a good thing because he got your, he bought you a car and pay all the house notes. But is it a good thing that he's abusing you 24-7? No, we're going to all say no, I'm pretty sure. So looks can be deceiving. See, on the outside, you see this big $2.3 million house. But on the inside, the $2.3 million house, they live in a $5 dream because the husband is abusive, the wife is abusive, the children getting abused, and nobody escaping. It's just We just see a nice house. We see them come out in their nice cars. BMWs and Lamborghinis, we're like, oh, they got it all together, not realizing they don't have nothing together. That's why the saying is, you don't know what goes on behind closed doors, and you don't because we don't know what the people are doing in that house. Just because they can afford a two, three, four million dollar house, twenty million dollar house, that don't mean they got everything figured out. Oh, you don't believe me? Let's look at pick any celebrity that been around for a while. They've got all this money. I'm talking about hundreds of millions of dollars. And you look at it, they've been in out of jail. They've been in abusive situations. They've been married 18 times. So do you really think they haven't figured out? I'm not saying any of these people are narcissists, but what I am saying, money does not buy happiness. So just because you see the $2 million house, just because you see the $100,000 car, that does not mean it's happiness in that home. That's all I'm trying to say. That's all I'm trying to say. So let's move forward. So escaping the narcissist to say your life is a life-changing decision. See, it's not just about you in most situations. Love the beach. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> She's like, hey, Coach Alana, but straight. What a family. <laughs> I was trying to say I was trying to be serious. I, I was going good for about 10 good minutes. <laughs> Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Yes, I did get a fresh haircut right before. Not too long ago, I got a fresh haircut, so thank you for that. <laughs> I'm glad you noticed. <laughs> uh, so escaping a narcissist to save your life is a life-changing decision. But what you have to understand is sometimes, oh, no, you good, love the beach. You good, you good. Sometimes it's not just about you. It's about family and, and friends. Because you're taking care of, let's say, your, your mother. Or maybe you're taking care of your mother-in-law. Or you have children in the house. or Maybe it's you and we can go as simple as go all the way down to pets. You got a dog in the house. But if you are being abused, do you know that the dog recognizes this emotional abuse as well? See, the dog is smart enough to know that something is not right. So when you're raising your voice or when that person is raising a voice and hollering at you or throwing place, what do you think happened to the dog? You know there's a such thing as PTSD for dogs as well? I'm pretty sure most of y'all know that, but some of y'all might not know that. So dogs get abused as well now they might not be getting hit they might not be getting like you know straight abuse to them but them witnessing or watching the abuse happen in the household the dog is actually forming emotional abuse as well and i'm not no dog psychologist or anything but i can tell you that that dog watching all that stuff or even that cat sometimes they understand that this is abuse so isn't it crazy that or weird that the dog or the cat can recognize the abuse, but the adult in the situation doesn't recognize the abuse. I'll let that I'll let that sink in for a little while. I'm gonna say that one more time. Isn't it odd or strange or weird 
are kind of confusing that the dog or the cat can recognize the abuse, but the human, the adult, the 25, the 35, the 45 year old person don't recognize they've been abused. Hmm. Well, let me see. Let me see. So I just seen something in the chat. Let's see. Let's see. Where is it at? Yeah, my wife said, good point. Animals can sense evil too. They can. They can sense evil. So think about that. So if you see your dog over there trembling in the corner and frightened every time this person walk in, that should be another red flag. It should be another red flag that something is going on. You might not recognize, but you see your dog, you know, your dog you love, been having him for, you know, 10 years. All of a sudden, this Jada Joker moves in. And not a dog fearful and scareful. It ain't no different than a child being scared of this person. Think about what I'm saying. I got well, why my dog all of a sudden scared of this person. Never acted like this before. Been having a dog eight years, seven years, whatever the case is. Been having this dog all this time, and the dog never been scared of anybody. All of a sudden, this joker moves in, and he fearful of you. Hmm. Some of your mind should tell you something is off. I'm just trying to, that just came to me just now. I don't know what a dog and cat, but it makes sense when you think about it. Something is off. My dog is all of a sudden scared of this person or my cat takes off running when this person walks in the house. Maybe I need to get some cameras installed in my house so I can figure out what's going on in my home. Maybe, maybe the enemy is right in the house. I've been praying, you know, against the enemy, but if the enemy is right in my household, that's, you can't get no closer in the inner circle than that. That's right in my sleeping with the enemy, like the movie. So now I gotta make a decision. I need maybe I need to put up some cameras, put a little, you know, spend a little money. I need to have a you know a close relationship and and figure out what's going on. Why my dog getting scared? Why my child don't want to be around this person? What is it? Sometimes it can be nothing. Sometimes it can be everything. Just think about what I'm saying. I'm like the wrong one. Where is it? I just seen it. Hold on. Brother said, your pets are the first line of defense against unclean spirits. Trust them like you trust your gut. Y'all heard what he said? Y'all heard what he said? He said, your pets are the first line of defense against unclean spirits. Like my wife just said earlier, pets recognize stuff. We don't look at pets like that, but if you really think about what we're trying to tell you right now, pets recognize unclean spirits. Probably before we do. I know a lot of us talk about discernment and all that. And we got discernment. I get it. But sometimes our pets know just as much as we do when it comes to, like he said, unclean spirits. So you got to trust them. Trust your gut. I'm ready. Thank you for sharing that. You right about that, sir. You right. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you for that. Right, Rizzo, sleeping with the enemy. Yeah. I think that Andrea she said, uh, every animal I had, they, they ended up dead. And my narc parent would always say a stranger must have poisoned it. We already know what's going on. We already know what's going on. Parents, narcissistic parents do evil things. See, it's not just about, you thought this was about escaping a narcissist, just a husband and a wife. No, this is escaping any narcissist. In the workplace, a mama, a daddy, a brother, a sister, a child. I know y'all like talking about children, but yeah, they got children, narcissists out there too. Let's just be honest about it. I know that might be breaking news, but like she said, every animal she had. That's psychotic. That's what that is. That's what that is. Hey, how you doing, Joshua? Welcome, welcome. So you have to understand that when you're in these situations and you do have a pet, pay attention to that pet. If you are, if you haven't been paying attention to it, maybe you might want to start paying attention to it might figure out a couple of things this person you got in your house and this pet always running around and hide or shaking you know they, they get the shakes and stuff because they're scared they're trembling but like i said they have a such thing as ptsd for animals as well especially i know in dogs so learning to run and go no contact is a lifesaver and i know i didn't talk about it you heard people talked about low contact i get it sometimes you can do low contact and it might work but sometimes you got to do full force, boundaries in place, no contact. 
No contact is exactly what it says it is. No contact on social media, phones, phone calls, text messages, snail mail, emails, through a friend, through a buddy, through your mama, through your daddy. You notice know, what they try to do? They try to go to your mama house. You know, I love, you know, I love, uh, I love Susan and, you know, I just wanted to work out and they basically love bomb the parent and then what the parent do? They call you while that joker sitting at their dining room table and say, well, why don't you just give him another shot? Bill, I think he changed. Bill just beat her last night. Bill ain't changed. Bill just trying to figure out where she at. So no, you have to go no contact sometime with your parents because they don't understand or they don't want to understand. So you're not just escaping the narcissist. Now you got to escape a potential. I'm not calling your parents a flying monkey, but you're escaping a potential flying monkey or a potential enabler because they falling for the okie doke. They falling for the banana in the tailpipe. They basically believe in the trash that is spewing out of this narcissist's mouth. That's what they, I mean, let's be honest, that's what they're doing. So, because if they go pick up that phone, if you just told them, I don't want no contact with them. I don't, if they come over there looking for me, do not call me. And then your mom or your dad picks up the phone and call you. Or they do one worse. They tell this, this sorry joker, where you at? Now you have to make another decision. See, learning to run and go no contact is a lifesaver. Now you might have to go no contact with your parent as well. Now, that might not be forever with the parent. Maybe the parent might break through and finally understand. They really love you. They go pick, they go choose a side at some point and be like, okay, okay. I, I, I love my daughter. I love my son way more than I love this joker. And the things they didn't told me, I believe my son or my daughter. But then sometimes these parents don't believe you. They believe who? They believe the narcissist. And that sucks. It really does. First Bible verse, Genesis 19, 17. And as they brought them out, one said, escape for your life. Do not look back or stop anywhere in the valley. Escape to the hills, lest you be swept away. Hmm. I'm going to read that one more time. And as they brought them out, one said, escape for your life. So when you're dealing with narcissist abuse or dealing with any kind of abuser, don't just get stuck on narcissism. You're dealing with any kind of abuser. You have to escape for your life. Do not look back or stop anyway. Just keep on going. You go to the next city. You go to the next state. You go wherever you need to. Because your life depends on it. Your children's life depends on it. And we just discussed your pet life depends on it. Some people think pets are not part of the family. I disagree with that. Pets are definitely a part of the family. You get close with a pet and, and you have them for, you know, so many years. Trust me. When they pass away, it's just like you lost a member of the family. Because, you know, you, I know when I had my, I, when the last dog I had, I had a, a Belgian Malamar. And basically, it looked like a smaller version of a German Shepherd. You'll see, like, the police have them, the military have them. That's what I had. Uh, her name was Stella. But, I mean, I used to go home, end up talking to my dog. You know, we run around the house chasing each other, playing high go seek. So you build a bond even with the pet. So if I was in a narcissist abuse situation then, guess who was going to escape with me? I was taking my pet with me. But thank God I was not in there. I just came out of one and divorced and all that stuff. But what I'm saying is, these pets are a part of the family as well. Take them with you when you leave. Don't let them see the narcissists. They they try to use that in court. Well, they ain't want the dog. They ain't want the children. But what they do, they fight for them because they want them. Because you're trying to escape the narcissist. They're trying to pull you back in. They're trying to keep you close to them. They're trying to keep eyes on you. They're trying to watch everything you do. Can't make this stuff up. I'm going to jump into the chat after I read a couple more. Uh, realize that this is a form of abuse. This is a form of abuse. You don't have to call me. You don't have to text Shannon. You don't have to reach out to Joy. You don't have to go watch Dr. Romney to realize this is abuse. It don't matter if it's a man. It doesn't matter if it's a woman that's doing the abuse. It is. Is abuse. It's, it's abuse. It's, it's if they 
financially abusing you and, and taking all your money out your bank account, that's abuse. If they emotionally abusing you, you know, calling you names and, and saying you fat and ugly and all, that is a form of abuse. And it's no place for that. Not in a godly home is no place for that, but a godly marriage or it's supposed to be a godly relationship. You know, people say, oh, I'm in a godly relationship. They're not married, but they say the man they dating or the woman they date, it's a godly union. Okay. Well, if it is a godly union, why is she talking to all your homeboys and sitting on their lap? I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll wait for that answer. You know, I'm not going to get that answer, but you know what I'm saying. Why is she over there? Kiki in with your homeboy. Now she noticed your homeboy, but she over there kiki in with them. Why he over there rubbing on your girlfriend? Why he got your girlfriend phone number? But again, on the outside looking in, it's what? It's a golly union. God put them together. No, the internet put you together. You swipe left, swipe right, whatever you did, up, down, I don't know. And you found him and said, yep, that's him right there. That's him. That's her. I like her curves. So you went off the physical, and now you ended up with another narcissist. And then what you want to do, I said this before, I'll say it again. You first person you blame. You don't blame yourself. You don't blame your, your cousin for taking you to get on that app. You don't blame your brother for helping you build a profile. You don't blame your sister for helping you on your first date to go out with them. Nah, you blame God. That's what you do. You blame God. You say it's all God fault. God sent this person to my life. But you was over there swiping left and swiping right or swiping up and down. God ain't tell you to get on that app. But hey, that's not what this is about. This is about escaping the north. Let me get back on track. <laughs> let me get let me get back. <laughs> Love to be say swiped on crazy. <laughs> It's swiping, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. But you're trying to escape something. To me, you're going to do all that you can, everything in your power to escape that. You know what? I got to put this one up there. I, I was about to jump into the chat anyway. Let me scroll down. profile big 20 years old <laughs> Mindy Mahogany you are right the lie detector determined that is the truth <laughs> that's, not a lie. that's the first time I said that on here usually I say that's a lie but no that is the truth the picture old as I don't know what and you up there looking at the <laughs> I didn't see them TikToks are they looking at the phone looking at the person <laughs> is this you or your daughter <laughs> it's a picture from 1995 when they was in high school. What am I supposed to do with that? You, come on, man. <laughs> TikTok be killing me, man. So yeah, they're on there looking at the phone, looking at the person. But again, you right about that. <laughs> ah, TikTok is off the chain, man. That, 20 years old. No recent photo. Back when it was they, how you said it, they high school weight. There's 120 pounds back in 95. They showing you that picture. Yeah. Okay. Back when they had long hair and all this other good stuff and cute dimples and not even had five children. Or maybe it's a man and he stopped working out. He ain't work out like he used to. The high school photo was he was a, 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 a jock. You know, he played sports. Ain't played sports since high school. So. Ain't worked out since high school, so you know how that look. That look like this buzzer right here. That's how his stomach look. Just round, see how that look? <laughs> That's how his stomach look. Just buzzer, this stomach just out there. You know, he ain't worked out in a while, but he got a picture on the internet. He look like uh, American, you know, I don't know, look like America uh, sexiest man. Yeah. <laughs> like he should be on the billboard or something, but nah. His stomach look like that. Or her stomach look like that. And I'm not trying to be graphic, but her stomach like that and her butt look just like this, flat, just like that. I'm just saying. Just... Y'all started it. I didn't... She started the 20-year-old picture. I just took it left. I'm trying to get back on track. Trying to trying to get back on track. 
trying to get back on track. My bad, my bad. I just I saw the vision. And I was like, yeah, that's yeah, that. <laughs> my bad. Let's get back on the track. Let's get back on track. See, you can blame Mr. Mahogany for that. <laughs> I hit the buzzer so we can keep moving. <laughs> My fault. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Let me see what she's saying. Hold on. She's saying she say got a picture of Buddy up, but he looked like the nutty prof- <laughs> I didn't know it was gonna do this much laughing tonight. I really didn't. I thought it was gonna be a serious subject, but the lie detector determined <laughs> that was a <laughs> It's serious, but you know, got a bit of laughing going on. All right, let me get back. Let me get back to what I was. That was good. That was good. That was good. Something you need to you need to do when you thinking about escaping the narcissist. Some people on the fence about document documentation. Should you do it? Should you video record all this different stuff? I say do it. If you if your state don't allow you to do that later on, well, I would have more evidence than not have enough. Cause you'll be mad and they say, oh well, yeah, we do video, and then <laughs> say Sherman, Sherman, Sherman. <laughs> yeah, that's good. So document, write the stuff down, take pictures. When you're getting abused, document that stuff. Post it on your social media on a private thing if you have to or whatever. Cause you know sometimes you don't want to call the police. I get it. You don't want the police in your business. You don't want the sheriff department in your business. But most of y'all, y'all don't want what it is. It ain't that you don't want the police or the sheriff department in your business. You don't want your neighbors in your business. Let's just be honest. Am I being, are, are we being honest tonight? It ain't about the sheriff coming to your house. That's the easy part. It ain't about the cop coming to your house. It's about your neighbors. Now they know you're getting abused in the house, so therefore you're not going to call the cops. Okay. As a man, guess what I had to do? I had to call the cops because I was in there getting abused and scratched up, neck scratched up. So I had to make a decision. Either I can call the police and the neighbors find out, or I can stay in here until I end up unalive. I made a decision to call the police. I didn't want to be unalive. I didn't think it was time for me to go then. So therefore, documentation. So the police reports is another form of documentation. It's not just about you writing down stuff. When I say documentation, call the police. Now you got a, a what you call it? You have a, a report. They give you a police report. They give you a number for it. You can go have that printed out. The police go have this on file. So now every time they call, you going to the, you know, you going to the same residence. They know well, we've been here six times in the last three months. It always been domestic abuse. Okay, I'm arresting, you know, you'll see it on the thing. Well, I'm arresting him tonight if he if he hit her this time, or if she hit him this time, I'm gonna arrest them tonight because I had to arrest them last time. So now you got a running document, all stuff you can use in court. So when you're trying exactly minimum paper trail. So when you're trying to get out of there. You're trying to escape the narcissist to save your life. Now you go back to all these police reports. And then you can go one step further. Some of these police, you know what? You know what they like to do? They don't like arresting the same criminal over and over. So you know what they do sometimes? If you got a good lawyer, they'll testify on your behalf in court. Hmm. Think about what I'm saying. So now you got a witness that's a public you know what I'm saying? A public, you know, you know, a police, you know, they hold them in high regard. So now you got police officers, or maybe a couple of officers. Yeah, when I went there, you know, he was hitting there in front of us, or she was beating on him, and I had to. So now it makes your case more solid. You got to use everything to your advantage when you're trying to escape these evil people, because they're evil. So some of the things that I want you to not do. And realizing the abuse form abuse is one, but please do not say that you're leaving. Don't announce to the world. Don't tell the narcissist, please. I'm not even being funny on this part. Do not tell the narcissist that you're leaving and, and, and it's months or weeks in advance. No. Plan your work. Work your plan. You wait until you're out of there. They'll figure out, guess what? When the furniture's all out the house. Or, you, or just your stuff gone and they come to the house or you stop answering your cell phone or you didn't switch phone numbers, they know you're gone. And it ain't a doubt in their mind why you left. They've been abusing you. So you don't have to announce, hey, I'm, I'm, you know what, I'm leaving you in two months. 
So now this sorry joker got two months to try to either love bomb you or try to unalive you. Either way, it's not a good situation. Cause they love bomb you too good. You gonna be right back in, but like, okay, he changed. I'm not going. She changed. I'm not going. So instead of you escaping, you doggone coming back in. You don't see too many people escape prison and then break back in. If you think about it that way, most people that escape prison, guess what? They on police hunts looking for these people for weeks at a time trying to find them. They don't escape back into the prison. So we shouldn't be escaping and then running back into the prison because basically you're in a prison when you're a narcissist. Because if you think about it that way, you probably wouldn't run back into narcissism because look, like, I escaped. Why would I run back in the, I don't, what, the what the prison offering? Uh, you know, more money on your books. They're giving some discount on cookies or something. They're giving better cookies at the commissary. I'm not going back enough for that. I escaped for a reason. So I escaped narcissist abuse for a reason. That's to not go back in. Just saying. Another thing, get support before you plan your escape. So if you can, if you can, find somebody that you can confide in because somebody didn't know what you're doing because if something happens, at least one or two people know, hey, look, Solomon said, you know what I'm saying? He was leaving her. She was crazy. She'd been beating on him. He had said he was leaving and now we can't find him. You see what I'm saying? So now they're like, okay. So if you tell one or two people that you can trust, you know, go keep it in, in house. You tell somebody, so find you somebody you can, you know, get, get support before you leave. That way, when you do escape and you get out of there, they go, I know why, I know why he left. I know why she left. Just saying. Love to be saying I'm free physically and importantly, spiritually, not going back. Mind made up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all put some flames in the chat. Love the beach. That's what we that's what we all about over here. We're all about getting up out of there, escape. Get up out of there. I'll put some flames or praising hands or whatever in the chat because that right there, that's what that's why I be doing these man. I be, I just want people to escape. I want people to escape, but I also want them to find Jesus. Find them, you know what I'm saying? Start reading their Bible more, start healing, start, start understanding what this is all about. It's not, it's not about you know just abuse and 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 and, and neglect and just staying in it forever and ever. It's not what it's about. It's about what Love the Beast just said. She said, I'm free physically. And importantly, let me put that up on the thing. Hold on, let me put that up. Hold on, let me put it up. There you go. She said, I'm free physically and importantly, spiritually, not going back, mind made up. Hallelujah. <laughs> There's a few of them. Because every time one of our brothers or sisters escape from abuse, whether it's narcissist abuse or whatever kind of abuse, we should be. We should be just saying, thank you, God, hallelujah, you're putting flames in the chat. Because at the end of the day, people need to know that they're being supported. Now, we might not see her, you know what I'm saying, or talk to her on the phone or whatever, but her coming in here and just saying, you know what I'm saying, I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm free physically and importantly, spiritually. We have to be praying for these people when they escape. You know how it was. Well, y'all know how it is when y'all escaped and, and that first, first few months or that first year, some of us, you know, you didn't know who to talk to. You didn't want to open up to nobody. You didn't know really what you was dealing with. You didn't even know it was a narcissist until you divorced the narcissist. Then you started doing research, some of us, and you figured out that was a narcissist. So for her to say that, awesome. Thank God. Thank you for uh, sharing that with us because we need to know, We need to hear these things. People are sitting in here or go watch this live, watch the replay, and be like, you might be the motivation that helped them leave. That's why I say, man, it's, it's, it's one thing to just sit there and comment, but it's a whole different thing to just sit there and just, like Shannon always say, lurk and don't like. Because the point is, if you comment, like something like this, that's why I like putting stuff up on the screen. I'm free physically and importantly, spiritually, not going back. My man, somebody else might read that one thing and they might be like, you know what? If they can do it, I can do it too. So I'm going to escape. The message is about escape. How you doing, Tyree Williams? Welcome, brother. Just getting in. You got to watch the replay on this one. We started off, uh, we started off real funny. But we didn't work some, some kinks out, uh, Tyree. We're doing better. We just was laughing a while ago, but we're doing better. So you have to understand that this might help somebody escape. It might help somebody escape. So that's why I love when people share things like that. Yes. Lyrics is another. She said, I don't want to go back the way things used to be. I'm doing much better. Can stand through any weather. Amen. Put some more flames in the chat. Amen to that. Again, it's a brother or sister that has escaped a situation that situation, we all know it could have went either way. It could have went left, like, like we say. You know what I'm saying? And we don't speak that over nobody, but we know how some of these situations end. 
we know sometimes we with these people and they mean us no good. They mean us all harm and hurt. They don't mean us no good. They say all the good things. No, 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 no. And 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 I forgot who shared the video with me. It might have been Jor or I don't know if it's Jor or Lori. One of them shared a video with me too. Uh, and Shannon mentioned it to me earlier, but I watched the video earlier on TikTok. Uh, a, a girl went to Mexico with some of her friends. That's why you gotta watch the people you're around. I ain't saying they narcissists, but sometimes you got to escape your own friendship because these friends mean you no good, like I just said. Went down to Mexico. These people beat her until she was unalive, videotaped it, left her on the floor naked, and left. they, they, they came back home to America. I'm going to say this again. They've been friends with the young lady for five years. They went down to Mexico. They beat her. Now, I don't know if all of them beat her or one of them beat her. Anyway, they videotaped it. They posted it on social media. And they left the young lady there butt naked in Mexico, a whole nother country. Into my new Mexico, talking about Mexico, the country. Left her in Mexico and they came back to America. These people need to, whoever they are, even the ones that filmed. I don't know them. I, I know it was four or five of them. Whoever they are, they need to be caught and they need to be prosecuted to the fullest end of the law, whatever that may be, because how you going to say you friends with somebody, y'all go on a, on a trip, a planned trip, and then you leave this young woman, you beat her, and then you leave out there unalive, and you just come back home? Yeah. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. But we have these snakes in our camp sometimes. That's why we talk about this. We have these people in our circle. That's why I'm always talking about that. You got to watch the people that's in your circle. Some of these people, I'm trying to tell y'all, some of these people, they're not your friends. They're not. I know we want them to be. I know we want to be close to people. I know we want to open up to people. I know we want to love everybody and all these different things. But you can't. You can't trust everybody. I'm talking about to I'm talking to men and women. I know I'm talking about a story about a woman. I'm talking to men and women. Sometimes the people you let in is the same people that's gonna try to destroy you. Sometimes the people that you love on is the people that actually hate you. Am I making sense? I hope I'm being clear with this. He said, faith-based workplace, North Free Living, Pink Girl Teachers. I praise y'all for directing me to you all. You have helped me to understand what I've been dealing with the past 10 years. With, with my stepkids. Amen. Thank you for coming around, brother. It's, it's good to see more men. My wife been praying for that, for more men coming around. So we have more brother Tyree in here, Rizzo in here. Uh, who else in the HT in here? I think we got a couple other brothers, Joshua in here. So it's good to see more men come around and open up because trust me, I feel your pain. If you if you watch, if you haven't watched my story, go watch my, my playlist of my story why I open up about what I went through like in, in its entirety. Escaping the narcissist. That's what I had to do. I had to escape the narcissist. Didn't know it was a narcissist because I didn't know what narcissist really was. I told you, I thought a narcissist was somebody that was conceited and looked in the mirror. I was mistaken. I was wrong. That's not what they are. They evil and vindictive and all other names. You know, all the names we can give them. I seen something pop up over here, but it didn't pop up. Hold on. Where did it go? Oh, Tiffany, uh, thank you. They say hallelujah in Jesus' name. Thank you for being a member for four months. I don't know why I didn't pop up over here. I see it over here on YouTube. I can't click on it, but thank you for that. Uh, thank you for being a member for four months. God bless you. And thank you for always sharing, you know, uh, comments and everything in the chat. God bless you. I don't know why I didn't pop up. It's weird. That's what I was looking for, but I, I still don't see it. Okay. I don't know why I didn't pop up, but I see it over here on YouTube. That's why I try to open it up. But, uh, all right, let's get back to this. We are we're getting closer to the end. Let's see where we at. Next Bible verse, Joshua 1 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. See, you got to be strong and courageous. I ain't this this is a Bible verse. I ain't tell, I, I didn't tell you to be strong and courageous. I'm, I'm asking you to be strong and courageous, but we're reading the Bible. Have I not commanded you to be, be strong and courageous? Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. See, what you got to do when you're escaping something, when you're escaping. A uh, 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 abusive situation. You got to realize that you got to be courageous. You have to have faith. Your discernment has to be on uh, on one hundred. You got to know that God brought you through this. He's going to get you through this whole situation. 
You, Shannon has said this before. I didn't, you might have to go live with somebody. I had to even do that. I had to do that for a while. You might have to go stay with somebody for a little while. You might have to just stay in a hotel until you get on your feet. You might have to do some of these things, but I can tell you this much. I'd rather stay with somebody before I stay in a beach. I'd rather stay in a, if I had to go stay at a shelter before I stay in a beach. I'd rather go sleep in my car before I stay in a beach. I'm not just telling you, I would do that before I just stayed in a beach. I would stay in a hotel, and a hotel is not the best, but I would stay in a hotel if I can afford it before I just stay in a beach. Is what I'm trying to get y'all to understand. Just think about what I'm saying. No, the wrong one. Thank you for that super sticker. God bless you. May God return it to you over and over again, brother. God bless you. Thank you for sharing that. So, yeah, it's a lot of this. Like I told you, life is all about choices. So you have a choice to make. You can stay in the abuse or you can escape the abuse. Now, when you escape the abuse, things are not going to be right for that first few months or that first year. Like I said, you might have to go live with somebody. And you might not have to. Maybe you got the money and the means. You ain't got to do that. Thank God for that. But some of us have to go stay with somebody. So, yeah, we escaped the situation, but we still are dealing with the with the fallout of that makes sense. So now we got to go stay with somebody or, 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 you know, do these things. And it might be six months. It might be a year. It, it ain't no telling. Because they're trying to take you to court. They already got you over the barrel, as the saying goes. They're trying to take you to court. You know how narcissists do. Or anybody with money, go try to take you to court because they know you ain't got a lot of money. Or if you got a lot of money, trying to take all your money, just keep taking you to court, taking you to court, taking you to court. That's why people are so quick to just, I want to file for divorce, and I just want a simple divorce, all the other stuff, whatever. You can have a house, you can have the cars, whatever. You can have it. Why am I going to go to court fighting over something that I really don't want? No way, but that's what narcissists do. So just escape. Just get your butt up out of there is what I'm trying to say. So after all the fighting to escape, remind yourself why you left in the first place. So you have to, it had to be a constant reminder, you telling yourself, look, you know, because I, I see it all the time, especially on TikTok and stuff. I see it all the time when people say, even on YouTube, sometimes people say, well, you know, you know, he, I, I think he might have changed. And, you know, it's been a few months and, you know, he haven't, you know, been aggressive to me or she might have changed. You know, she cheated on me them few times, but, you know, maybe she's changed this time. She know I'm really gone. I've been gone three months. Man, look here. Remind yourself why you left in the first place. You left because of cheating. Now, I'm not saying, now, I know people try to take me for my word, but I'm not saying that your relationship cannot work out. I'm saying remind yourself why you left so you make the decision if you want to go back. Now, if you want to go back, go ahead and go back. How you doing, Janessa Lewis? Welcome, welcome. If you want to go back, go ahead and go back. I ain't going to be mad at you. I support you or whatever your decision is. But what we don't want, I don't want you going back into an abusive situation and then thinking, uh, that's a mind thing, mind thing, hold on, let's wait for it. It's a mind thing. So you go back into the abusive situation thinking, well, they helped me one time. I'm talking about your family, friends, if it's us here on YouTube, whatever, if I help you through messages, whatever, I won't tell them this time because they go look at me with the side eye or they go talk about me or they go judge me. The lie detector determined that is a lot. No, I'm not going to judge you because we all have been there where we've gone back. Now, some people might not tell you. I'm telling you, I've been in that situation where I went back. I've been in a situation where I had to learn. I told family members, yeah, I ain't want, want to be with other more, blah, 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 blah. I'm out. I'm done getting my clothes and all this stuff. And guess what? I, as a man, young man, then went back. Now, they got people say that maybe it was voodoo on me and, and all this other stuff. I rebuke all that. But whatever the case is, I'm telling you that I'm telling you, listen to me. I hope you're listening. I, I can't speak for nobody else. And I'm telling you that I went back. They can say what they want in the chat. I don't know. But I'm telling you, I, as a man, went back to an abusive situation. When I say abusive, we're not talking about financial, although it was that too. It was financial as well. We're not talking about just mentally, although it was that too. We're not just talking about emotionally, although it was that too. We're talking about physical abuse. I just named you four abuses that I was a man that I was dealing with in the household. When you look at it, I wasn't loved in that household. And I went back. So my point is, don't think that people are not going to support you. But what I did learn, and Shannon and I just talked about this 
be, before I went live, what I did learn, see, sometimes you can't tell everybody everything. Maybe you just leave it simple. Look, we're going through some things and we maybe going through a separation. You ain't, maybe you don't tell them about all the abuse because you don't trust them enough. Because if you do, go back. Those people, P17, how you doing? Uh, those people, catch this, those people are going to be the ones that's going to be looking at you with the side eye. But not only you, they could be looking at your spouse or your or, or your you know your wife, your husband, your boyfriend, your girlfriend differently because I don't know why it's not popping up over here. Let's say don't debate escape before it's too late. God will make a way. Thank you for being a member of the channel for four months. God bless you. It ain't popping up over here. I don't understand why. Some I guess something between YouTube and uh, the thing I'm using. But anyway, I see it over here. So thank you for that, Lyrics. Thank you for being a member for four months. Lyrics is over there rhyming. She a lyricist, so she's doing what lyricists do. So you have to understand, don't, don't put yourself, what I'm, what I'm saying, don't paint yourself in a corner by telling everybody. I did learn that. Now, you do what you want to do because sometimes those same people, like I said, they're going to be the ones that go, you, you taking him back? You taking her back? Why are you doing that? I thought you said you didn't want See, you know what I'm saying? So now you got, instead of just your own mind, your own conscious playing with you, now you got 10 or 12 people you didn't told, and they didn't told the whole family know now. So now you're sitting there like, man, hold on, man. Why did I trust me? I'm telling you what I did. I had to learn the hard way. I bet you I won't tell them no more. It's only going to be a couple people I'm going to tell I'm doing going through a situation. Now I got a wife I can go through and tell her, you know, I'm going through whatever, if it's at work or whatever. I got somebody to bounce ideas. I know that I can go to God first and talk to him. You know what I'm saying? But well, you know what I'm saying? When you're in these situations, you trust me. My cousin, them, they, they never they never had seen me cry. And one of them older than me, one of them younger than me. But I'll tell you, when, when I was going through that situation, that's after the Honduras thing. That's after that fall out of that and came from Honduras and did all that. Go watch the story. Uh, I'm back. I was in Lake Charles, Louisiana. And I remember uh, me and my younger cousin, we had just went. When eat at Texas Roadhouse, you know, we had a good time. And then, uh, I don't know. I just, I couldn't take it no more. I had to open up and tell them. Nobody knew. Nobody knew what I was going through. Nobody knew that she had got married to another man. And I went to, nobody knew none of that. So I started telling my cousin. We was close then. We're not close now. But I started telling them. And she was like, wait, what? So she got mad. I never seen her this mad before. She was mad. She said, I'm ready to go to, you know, to the house and, you know, fight. And I wasn't telling her that for that. I just needed somebody, to, you know what I'm saying? As a man, I needed somebody to open up to. Couldn't go tell the goofball. That was the, well, the ex and I, that was the wife then. I, didn't, I wasn't telling her, obviously. So we went to my older cousin. So no, I got to go tell, you know, because my older cousin, we real close. It's like my sister. So went over there. And that's the first time I ever cried in front of my cousin. So when well, they knew then, when I started crying in front of them, they knew, they all started crying. They knew, okay. They knew it was over then and they knew, that something was really wrong with Solomon because I never cried in front. He actually, I don't really, I'm not one. Most men usually don't cry. Well, most men, I know some men, they dog gonna cry, but I don't know how you cry all the time, but that's for another story. But when I started crying, they knew that this was real, this was serious, and I was done. I had enough. I just needed to get out. I just, I was opening up to them. So you have to understand that was, I wanted to escape. And the way that I was trying to escape was I'm finally telling my family. But see, the only difference is from what I just said a while ago is, I was telling my friend because I know there's no way in heck I can say heck on here. It was no way in heck I was going back. Not after all that. I was done. I was done. So you have to understand kind of what's going on. But you got to remind yourself why you left. So keep that in mind. Now I said it before. I'm going to say it again because I got to think. Tell someone, if you can, about the narcissist. Please tell somebody if you can. If you can trust them, tell somebody. I don't care. But you can't let go tell the priest tell somebody i don't know go talk to the pastor tell somebody you trust somebody at work when well, i don't agree with that i don't tell people work you know at work personal business is not my thing but if you got somebody at work you can trust i mean maybe you do tell them somebody needs to know these things this right here once you are out you see i got it in caps stay out once you out stay out don't get sucked back into the abuse Stay away from the abusive person. Stay away from the demonic person. Stay away from the physically abusive person. Stay away from the emotionally abusive person. And all other abuses they're doing to you as well. Just stay out. And go back to the other one I said. Remind yourself why you left in the first place. If you left for your children's safety, remind yourself that. If you left for your safety, 
If you left because you couldn't take it no more, the abuse. If you left because you just, you had your wits in and, and you thinking of unaliving yourself, think of that before you go back in that doggone house. If you're going back in the house, you need to have a police escort, get your stuff, and get your butt up out of there. But if you listen to what we've been telling you, you should have a go back and been gone and don't even worry about, I know you I know you want to, I know you want to hold on to the dining room table that your grandmother, I get it. Your grandmother gave you that dining room table and passed down. Let the courts fight over there. You don't go back in there and get that table. You can't get it out of there when you was leaving. Leave it there. Let the cops and uh, the lawyers or whatever fight over that later on. Don't let that be the reason why well, I'm going back. You know how some of y'all I'm going back. I'm going to get my grandmother table. So your life is worth you going back and get a table that's 70 years old? Okay. Okay. I mean, I get it. I get it. I mean, I, I get it. Trust me, I get it. Some things are, you know, heirlooms and all that. You know, you got rings and tables and, and chairs and china. I get it. But if you plan your work and work your plan, you'd have took all that stuff out the first time. That way there's no going back. See, if you plan your work, you're going to get a couple of brothers together that stay, you know, they know the situation or, or your brothers or a couple of cousins. The day he out of town or the day she out of town, you come there with that you all truck. You load up grandma's table and her chairs. You load up all the good china. You load up the bed set because you paid for it if you want it. Load up all your children things that you want and you leave. And you change your phone number. Don't tell them where you're going and you out. If you're going to do it the right way. That way you ain't worried about grandma dining room table that's been in the family for 70, 100 years. You're not worried about that. You're good. Hope I'm making sense with that. So if you can try, if you can try. Please try to save some, if you can, save some money. I'm talking about beforehand. Like, if you know you're about to leave within the next six months, remember, don't announce it. Don't announce it and tell them. Just start saving money if you can. If you're working, you know, whatever, start saving. I don't care if it's $100 a month or $100 a week, whatever the case, start saving some money. Get your separate account. I'm just giving you the game right now. Get your separate account. Put it in an account. Put it, If you got a credit union, go put that money. Up. Whatever you got to do, start putting that money to the side because you're going to need that money. For housing, for moving, the U-Haul truck I just talked about, maybe for the divorce, you're going to need that money then. Like my wife just said, plan your work and work your plan. we almost done. We're coming down to the end. We're almost done. So think of your children, your family, your friends, whomever it depends on, or depend on you, I guess you can say, to make it. Just think about that. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you got to understand these people don't care about you. Because if they did, they would have treated you the way you're supposed to be treated. If they did, they'd have treated us the way we're supposed to be treated. It wouldn't be abuse. It wouldn't be arguments. Now you're gonna have disagreements. Now that's not. I'm not gonna sit here and say, you know, what I'm saying this is. You gonna have disagreements. That's understandable. But you start getting the fist fights and arguments and and drag outs and you know the cops getting called and SWAT outside your house and all. That's too much. That's too much right there. Too too much. Hold on, I seen something my wife put. I'm almost done. Hold on. Let's see where is it? Where is it? Where did I see it? Okay, there you go. When I was talking about the table and stuff, say all the material things and all the money in the world isn't worth being with a demonically possessed person. There you go. So if you're going to risk your life over a chain, over a ring, over a watch, over a table, over a desk, over a car, over a house, you have some more stuff to learn. You do. You you not you not you not there yet. You gonna get there, but you're not there yet. That's all I'm trying to say. Because what you have to understand is, if you're trying to go back into the house to get a TV, I don't know if you know, but uh, I don't celebrate holidays, but I'm smart enough to know that Black Friday is coming up and Cyber Monday is coming up. If I'm going through a divorce now, if I'm you or going through a separation now, I don't have to come back into the house to get a TV. I can get a brand new TV, a brand new 70 inch for the price I paid for the. 50 inch a year ago on Black Friday. I can go on now or Cyber Monday. But to be honest with you, they started Black Friday deals already. It's a new thing they started. They started November the 1st. I don't know if you know that, but a lot of things are already doing uh, Black Friday sales already. Ask me how I know. I'm just saying. 
So don't get stuck on material things that you got to go back into the house with this evil person. Miss me with that. I'm just saying. All right, a couple more, a couple more. Where we at? Where we at? So I said this, but let me read it again. Think of your children, family, friends. Think of all that. Think of yourself. Think about what will happen if you go back into the house. Think about the love bombing, the trauma dumping. Think about the abuse. Think about the, the, the plates being thrown at your head. Think about, you know, the night they tried to choke you. Think about the, the physical abuse. Think about the cops getting called to your house. Think of all them thoughts. And I guarantee you through somewhere up in there, you'll be like, yeah, yeah, not worth me going back over there. Might, might, might want to stay. Might want to stay gone. This word, I have heard this word a few times before, but I wanted to define it and make sure it define Gumption, the ability to decide what is the best thing to do in particular situation and to do it with energy and determination. See, you got to have some gumption about yourself. You have to have the ability to decide to make whatever the decision you're about to do is the best thing. So if the decision is to divorce the narcissist or to run away or to go no contact or escape the narcissist, you got to show a little gumption. You got to stand on your faith. You got to believe that what God said <laughs> is real. So if God said, you know, even talking to you, your dreams or through your prayer life or whatever the case is, and he said he going to get you the house, he going to get you the car, even though you know you in your, you thought you was in your happy home, but the narcissist then took it over, he's going to provide. You have to believe that. Show some gumption. In, in court, don't go in there fearful. Don't go in there scared. Go in there with some gumption. Go in there with your chest out like you Superman or Wonder Woman or somebody and just stand up like, I'm not scared of you. You might have been scared of them at one point, but now you got faith. Now you got God. Now you got chain breaker warriors behind you. Now you got faith-based workplace behind you. We praying for you. So now nah, I got gumption. I can go in there and just stand there and be like, nah, nah, you ain't go. You ain't gonna win today, devil. Not today, Satan. I'm going in there just happy go lucky. I might laugh a little bit. The narcissist over there sitting over there. Don't make me start talking about the narcissist. You know, I talk about the 1976 nun. I'll say it. You know me. But they over there looking like the nun. And you wonder why I'm just laughing. Because you look stupid. I got gumption now. I got God. I got I got faith. I'm good. I know this all gonna work out. It might not look good right now while I'm sitting in this court. You might be looking stupider than me because you over there. With the 1976 nun suit on, straight from, I don't know, Party City. I don't know where you got that from. And you looking crazy. You got your arm wrapped up like I hit you and never did. But that's you. That's all good. But you have to understand that if I go in there with some gumption, they're going to realize that Solomon, something different about him. Yeah, something different. You're right. Something different about lyricists. Something different about Mindy Mahogany. Something different about authentic. and Something different about them this time. And the last few times they came into court, my lawyer ate them for lunch. You know how they be talking? My lawyer ate them for lunch. But this time you coming in there with some gumption. You in there like, nah. You in there with, you know, you standing up like, man, hey, it's all everything you saying, it don't mean nothing. Don't mean nothing. Again, gumption, the ability to decide what is the best thing to do in a particular situation. So the best decision is to get the divorce. Like, Jan like uh, Janice Lewis just said, period. That's the best decision for you and your children. That's the best decision. If it's just you, that's the best decision for you. Am I my advocate for divorce? No. But if you're in an abusive situation, danger. You have to understand it. It's time to go. This is the last thing right here. We right on time, 830. Uh, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear what can man do to me? I got gun. I didn't make gun. I didn't make a decision. I got God on my side. God ain't never lost the battle. So that's why I'm sitting there with my arm folded. Like, what you, what you want to do? What you want to do, little narcissist? What you, you know, I, I told you little is a backhanded compliment. Now, I'm, what you want to do, little narcissist? What you want? You want to do a divorce? You want to take the house? Okay, you can have it. Oh, you want all the fur? I can't get none of it? You can have it. Oh, you taking the car too? You can have it. God go get me another car. I'm going to get a brand new car. Okay. Oh, you trying to take my children from me? You can't have them. You can't have them. You're not worried of having these children. You're not worried of it. You see what I'm saying? So you just sit there. Just, just, just make it seem like you got it all figured out in court. Just sit there. Don't cry. Don't let them see you sweat. You just sit there like, hey, let your attorney do. You paying his attorney to do the attorney. You ain't got to speak out in court. Do your job. I'm paying you whatever. I'm paying you an hour, two, three hundred dollars an hour. Go ahead and handle that. 
I'm going to sit here and laugh a couple of times because she dressed like a 1979. So I'm about to laugh anyway. Never seen that outfit before. So that's what I'm on right now. I'm on laugh mode. <laughs> I'm laughing. Yeah, I'm, that's right. So little Narcissus. Exactly. Little, it's a little Narcissus over there. So now I'm, I'm out here. I'm laughing at the little Narcissus. Yeah, little, nar little Narcissus over there. Yeah, they're over there trying to take trying to take my house, take all the money out the bank account, get me arrested, trying to get me to jail. But everything you did, let's 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 replay this. I'm gonna tell you a real snippet of my let's replay this. So I told y'all this before, I'm gonna say this again. We're about to get out of here. So the narcissist then tried to get me arrested for hitting her. Got me arrested. I went to jail on a Friday night. I'm not making this up. This is not a story. This is real. Y'all heard some of y'all heard this before. I went to jail on a Friday night about seven or eight o'clock at night. I did. Went to jail, got fingerprinted. They took the picture just like you see in the movies. I asked, I remember when the dude was doing the fingerprint. I told this story before when the guy was taking the fingerprints and doing all that. I said, man, when I'm gonna get out of here? He said, man, you ain't getting out of here until Monday or Tuesday. It's Friday night, seven, eight o'clock at night. I say, what you mean? I say, man, it's it's Friday. He said, man, I ain't got no judge on a weekend. Go sign up. He said, you ain't here till Friday. He put me in the cell. I was in the cell by myself, laying on one of them hard bed, beds that come off the brick wall. And I'm praying and crying. I'm crying and praying. Like, man, this is not how my life's supposed to be going. Because for one, I didn't hit her. She lied. You know, Louisiana got this thing. They say you got hit. That's it. You going to jail. All a woman got to do is say that you hit them. And you get in the red. That's what she did. And it was crazy. A rewind. The cop that came out, it was a sheriff. She came out. She said she couldn't produce any bruises. She couldn't show nothing. Not that I'm a big guy. She said, but if you would have hit her, it would have been some kind of bruise. She couldn't show me anything. She said, but because she said you hit her, I had to get arrested. So we'll go fast forward. Let me go along. So back to where I was at. I'm laying in the jail cell, crying and praying, praying and crying. I guess a couple hours went by. It might have been 10 o'clock by that time. I'm like, man, this, this can't be real. I'm in jail for something I did not do. I'm just trying to get my life together, get out of the situation. Do you know that that that, that same guy that took my pictures and fingerprinted me, walked in the jail cell, opened it, swung the door open? It ain't, ain't like the Bible where they swore, you know, broke all the chairs and ain't, all that didn't happen. But he did swing the door open. He said, man, he said, Solomon. I said, yeah, you know, I just had my head like that. I was asleep. I was just, you know, you know, my back was hurt laying on that thing. He don't give you no pillow. Now. I was like, this here. He said, Solomon. I was like, yeah. He said, man, I don't know who you know. He said, but I've been here. I, I think he said five, six years. However long he been there. He been there for a while is what I'm saying. He said, I don't know who you know. He said, but it's a Friday night. And you got bailed out. Now, if you don't think God is real, uh, I don't know what to tell you. So that's part one of that. So that's part one. So I got bailed out on a Friday night around 10 o'clock. It was only like $14. So fast forward. Fast forward. The DA, the prosecutor in Louisiana, called me and <laughs> the ex in there and said, uh, he called me in there first. Called me in there first. Sat down. He said, look. He said, I'm dropping all charges to you. Now, see how God works. Let me show you how God works. He said, do you know such and such? That was my brother-in-law at the time. I'm like, yeah. He said, do you know such and such? That was my sister-in-law at the time. I said, yeah. He said, well, both of them wrote statements saying that you did not hit, touch, or provoke your wife. So I'm dropping all charges. He said, but what charges do you want to press on her? He said, because I got the whole. But see, if I'd have thought about it then, I'm not that, I'm not the evil of a person. I'm just not. That's not my thing. I was like, nah, because we were still mad. I said, nah, just, just let it slide. I said, are you sure? He said, because he said, we can put it in jail. But see, when you serve a God, even when you're not serving God like you should, God still protect you. So he not only got me out of jail, he made sure I didn't get a record. He made sure the DA dropped all charges. So, because I remember I was supposed to be enough for domestic violence, of uh, uh, domestic violence, assault, something, something. It was like three charges that's getting with domestic violence, assault, and something else. All charges dropped. I didn't get that's why I don't have a record to this day. I'm 44 years old. I can tell you that happened in my 20s. I'm 44 years old. I don't have a record. Ain't no, you can go check. I ain't got no record. I ain't got nothing because all charges would drop. See, sometimes you'll be in these situations and you can tell certain people you think those people can help you. Those people can't do nothing. It's not until you got some gumption and you make a decision and you go to God. See, that's how you get the help. You get the help from God.
just thought I'd share that with y'all. I know I shared this before, but I thought this was a good time. So escaping the narcissist was me actually going to God and say, I had enough. I'm done with it. I can't do this no more. Can't do it. Had to get out of the situation. So God will get you out of most situations. You just got to go out there and talk to him. You got to go out there and believe it. You got to go out there and ask him about it. See, some of y'all, some of us, I'm, I'm with y'all, us. I'm not the uh, Pittsburgh still a quarterback when he was talking about the team and he included himself. But anyway, he did that a couple weeks ago. But uh, I did it too. Not going to God, not going to the person that can really help me out this way. Trying to go to this person and that person. Going to a lawyer, not realizing I just go to God. The charges, wait, what do you mean? The arrest basically didn't happen. So yeah, I can say I'm arrested. I got arrested one time, but it is technically no, because you nothing there. Then I can turn around and say I have no charge. All charges got dropped in the situation. But the cra- you heard that story, the, the part that I did, the snippet I told you. Let's rewind. Oh, let me hit the rewind. Then we out of here. The brother-in-law and sister-in-law, which is not my brother and sister, it's her brother and sister, wrote statements for me saying that I never hit it because it was the truth. Think about that for a second. So, if you, and I, the type of family they are, they really close knit. So I'm surprised they did that, but then in a way, I'm not surprised because the way they are. But they wrote statements saying I never hit her, I never shoved her, I never punched her, I never did none of the stuff she basically everything she said. I ain't, I ain't do it from her brother and her sister. Well, I tell you, well, you're right. That's right. Look at God. God, God, do some things. I tell you. I'm a living witness. So I, that's why I'm on here happy and excited to be able to tell y'all stories from my life. I told you, if something I say can help somebody, I'm going to say it. I do it on TikTok. I do it here on YouTube. I do it on Instagram, whatever. Because my point is, something I'm telling you is something that didn't happen to me. It's not happening to me currently. Now, something I do say some things that are happening right now, but usually it's something that's happened previously. So if I'm sharing that, and it's going to help you right now. Why wouldn't I share that? So it's an old saying, and I always say this, am I my brother's keeper or my sister's keeper? Yes, I am. Now, everybody can't say that. Now, some people will lie to your face and tell you, oh, yeah, I am. And then as soon, <laughs> as soon as stuff get, how do they say that? Uh, you're too hot in the kitchen. Or, 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 you know, they hold their feet to the fire or something going on. Your brother and sister is no longer there. They no longer to be fine. I thought you was my brother. Keep they they not. They not. See, some people talk a good game, a good game. They 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 seem to be wanting to help. They look like they helping you, but the whole time, you know what they doing? They moving stuff around, trying to prevent you from getting your blessing. They I did a video about this. Go look it up. It's called blessing blockers. See, they got blessing blockers around us right now. They might have a blessing blocker right here in this live. I don't know. They in there just to deceive and, and, and fear God. They lurking and not liking. And, you know, some of them didn't even like the thing yet. That's all right. It's all good. They in here watching. So I, I, I'm, I'm good. I know, I know I'm good. I'm covering my wife. Be praying for my sister and brother. I'm good. I'm not tripping. Now, Solomon from 2020, when I first started YouTube, you might have could have got to me, maybe. Solomon right now, 2022, going into 2023. Good luck with that. I mean, good luck with coming in here with a little stupid comment. A little comment, you know, that's, that's backhanded comment. <laughs> Claim with your little comment thinking you go going to offend me. If you don't know by now, you should know. If you watch any one of my videos, I'm really a clown. I don't clown as much as I used to. Not back in like middle school, high school, and in the military. But trust me, I can go there if I really want to. I used to clown people so bad they want to fight me. But they wanted to play the dozen. How did make that make sense? You want to clown me, but when I clown you, you want to fight. Anyway, I'm a grown man. But what I'm telling you is, I, so the comments and people doing those things, I, whatever, it, it's all good. I'm I'm built for this. I'm when we when you look at Cat Williams and people like that. How you doing, Durant? When you look at people like that, that's what I love to do. I just don't do it. So don't don't. What I'm trying to say is, don't take my kindness for weakness. We are talking about escaping the narcissist and things like that. I I escaped. I escaped. I'm, I'm still working on my healing, but I'm healed enough to go back to clown and just, you know, I just, God is still working on me. He's still working on me, so I try not to do that. But don't think for a second that I won't do it. And don't think for a second that if I got your phone number, I won't just call you, because I will. Anybody that know me know that I don't do emails and text. I don't, nah, I'll call you. Shannon, I was talking about this right before I went live. I will call you. 
I ain't got to call you out on my life. I just call you on the phone and we're going to have words and whatever them. And we end up not talking to them, whatever. But people will take your kindness for weakness. They, they'll look at this and be like, well, yeah, he talk about God and all that. You see this shirt? I got an armor shirt, not because I bought it at Walmart. I was in the army. I'm just saying. You think you take that forever you want. I, I'm just saying. I was in the army. I'm not just wearing this shirt just because. Although I did buy this in Walmart or somewhere, but you get what I'm saying. I, I was actually in the military. So what I'm saying is people thinking, okay, I'm just trying, I'm just trying to warn you. I'm just I'm trying to be nice about these things, but I'm trying to warn you. And then you know, my wife is in a North Free Living. Shannon, I mean, one thing I don't play, I don't play with my kids or my wife or anything that's approaching me. So and I ain't saying nothing going on because nothing is because I would handle it. But please don't, please don't come over here messing with my wife. Please don't. Don't do it. Please, I, I just, I be, I be, I pray about this all the time because I know me. See, even though I talk about God and all these things, trust me, I, I'm a prayer warrior and all these things, and I try to let God take the will on something. But sometimes, some people do things. Yeah, save not soft, and right. Some people do things, and I'm like, okay, you gonna get, you gonna get, you gonna get the Solomon you want. You gonna get the Solomon you want. You want you you don't want the client of Solomon. You don't want the one that's talking about God and trying to get you, you know, healed out. You want the one that's go. Knuck if you buck, really. <laughs> Says right <on> time. That's <laughs> knuck if you buck. Put the gloves up. That's what they want. Go get hey, go get your knuck if you buck shirt on on uh faithbaseworkplace.com. You want one so people know you wear you walk around wearing that shirt there. No, okay, something wrong with that person. <laughs> something wrong with they wearing knuck if you buck. That's already telling you. Hey, so okay, they went look. I might not want to mess with them. They might be a little. I call it a little touch. <laughs> that little touch. So I'm just saying, don't don't mess with my wife. Don't mess with me. And we're gonna be cool. I, I'm just saying, don't mess with people. So I'm we gonna be cool. Now I can't go out there fighting for everybody. That's not what I'm called to do. But when it comes to my wife and my kids in this house, we are gonna have an issue. That knuck of you buck is real, and that buck is buck shot. <laughs> That's what that buck is. It ain't just. It ain't just fisticuffs. It's, it's buckshot. So you can read between the lines on that. I can say what I want to say, but that buck, knuck if you buck, is buckshot. So you go ahead. I'm just saying. I'm not trying to do none of that, but if I have to, I would do what I have to do. But people like to try people that talk about God. I'm going to say this last. I don't know how I was about to get out. I'm going to say this last thing. It's funny. It's really not funny, but it is how people curse God, talk about God, talk about, you know, people that's Christians or Christ father. They talk about them the most. I done said this and I'll say it again. But when it comes to Buddha and, and all these other uh, God, like Buddha, little fat belly, he look like this right here, Buddha. Except for his gold. You know, he got a gold stomach, gold body, big body. But anyway, you get what I'm saying? They talk about all these, you know, they talk about Jesus and God the most. They don't talk about all these other people. So it makes you wonder, you know, you talk about God or people want to come against you. As soon as you say something, they'll say God not real. I just proved to you that he is. My situation I went through and boom, got out of it. And time and time again, I can show you testimony after testimony that God is real. But people will talk about God. They will talk about Jesus. They will say Jesus is not the son of God. They will say all these things. But when it comes to Buddha, oh, it's all good. Buddha is all good. These other gods and stuff, these golden statues and stuff they got oh they all good they don't talk about them at all why is it they don't talk about them i might do a video about it. i'll tell you why because buddha don't talk back buddha's a little fat gold statue that sits in the corner i told y'all and gets food some of these other statues they don't talk back either god talked back though yahweh talks back last time i checked he talks back he got a message for me he got some of this stuff coming in right now that's coming in from the holy spirit buddha he like that that fluid leaf statue i got that that door prop i got right there that's what Buddha, he just sit there and they get a little goofball food and he don't eat it. And then the ants take it over. I'm just saying. I got something in mind. I'm just saying. Just think about what I'm saying. But they talk about God or anybody that's following God. They talk about him all the time. All the time. They want to speak up. Why you, why you want to talk about God and why you. Man, look here, man. I talk about God because God didn't deliver me from a whole bunch of situations. From Iraq, from mar failed marriage, from a narcissist, from narcissistic family members. The list goes on and on. They got part of my testimony I ain't shared, might not ever share, but they got stuff going on right now in my life that's a testimony and I ain't shared. But God is in work doing that. Buddha ain't doing that. 
I'm looking over there. I ain't got no boot in the house. I'm just looking. I see that. <laughs> I got a flute elite. Trust me. I ain't got no boot in here. I'm just looking back because I got a metal thing over there. But Buddha don't do that. I'll put my God up against any one of them gods all day, every day, and twice on Sunday. Why? Why would I do that? Because it's 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 too easy, actually. It's too easy. It's too easy for me to win this battle or that fight when I got my God going against their gods. When I'm trying to escape the narcissist, I go to God 10 out of 10, not 9 out of 10. 10 out of 10, I'm going to God. I ain't going to Buddha. What Buddha go do? When I go to Buddha and tell him I'm trying to escape the narcissist, what Buddha go tell me? First, I got to feed him. Still don't get that. I don't understand that. Why I got to bring him a plate? I got to bring him a plate. And he's supposed to tell me something? Okay. Okay, I'm done with the whole Buddha thing. I'm done with my rant. I'm cool. <laughs> I'm cool. <laughs> All right, let me see what's else in the chat. We about to get up out of here. <laughs> Jordan Ann said we say, but watch out when, when enough is enough. Exactly. When enough is enough and people are fed up, it's time to nook if you buck. Go get your t-shirts. <laughs> I'm laughing, but hey, go get your t-shirts. Where I think at? Go get your t-shirts. Go to uh, faithbasedworkplace.com. Go get your nook if you buck t-shirts. Matter of fact, let me put it up there again so y'all can see. I got to advertise my own stuff. I got to. I got to. Take this off right quick. Go get your nook if you buck t-shirts. Take this off. All right, now you can see it. It's nice, soft shirt. Nuck of you buck. Got my new uh, improvised logo on there because I couldn't put all the words, but go get your Nuck of you buck t-shirt. If you want to get Narcissus Abuse Survivor, because that's what we are, I got your Narcissus Abuse Survivor t-shirts. You can get those too. And if you want to, if you're dealing with parental alienation, I want to let everybody know that parental alienation is real. Hold on, I just see something in the chat. Hold on, let me get to it. Parental alienation. Oh, let me see. Sorry, he said, uh, when are the hoodies coming out? I'm about to, uh, I got to get my wife on that and see, because I was thinking about doing that. So I might do just the knuck of your buck uh, hoodie in black. Knuck of your buck hoodie in black. I might do that. I got to change it. So the hoodie I got on there is not available. I got to change it. But yeah, I might. I was thinking about that, doing the knuck if you buck hoodie in black with the same gold. Like, if you watch Joy Live on Sunday, she had the shirt on. I had this shirt on a while back, but Shannon been doing some videos with uh with some Nuck of You Buck shirts too. So yeah, it's gonna be a black hoodie because it is like my wife says hoodie season. So it's probably gonna be in black, and I'm gonna see if they got one other color I can get it in. But yeah, so black hoodie, Nuck of You Buck. So wait until the picture goes up there. When I put that Nuck of You Buck picture up there, that means we're ready to order those, and I'll try to do that this week. Put the picture up there and change it, and then make sure they got the hoodie. I want to make sure they got the hoodies available. So we got the t-shirts. And then we will have the hoodie, the knuck of your buck hoodie, if y'all want the knuck of your buck hoodie. All right. Got to Got to advertise our own stuff, y'all. Got to advertise. And again, if you didn't check out my video from earlier, uh, stay staying safe. This is if you're a, a faith based workplace member. Hey, how you doing, Impacted Master? Welcome. If you're a member, you can check out this video. I loaded it. It's like ten minutes long. Uh, staying safe after abuse. And then obviously, if you just logged into the live, you missed a good one. I can say that it was. We started off laughing. I can tell you that when I told the story about a about a guy off TikTok. But you can go rewind and watch that. You know, like the channel if you haven't liked it yet. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed to it yet. Hey, Jordan Ann said yes. Please do the hoodie. Okay, so we it's official. We go do the Nuck if you buck black hoodie. You can get the T-shirt now. Nuck if you buck. You can get the Narcissus Survivor T-shirt, and you can get the uh, Parental Alienation. But I'm definitely gonna do the Nuck if you buck, and I might. I might do the Narcissus Abuse Survivor hoodie as well in black. Yeah, I might do it in black. So I might do both of them in black. Black hoodie, Nuck of You Buck, and Narcissus Abuse Survivor. So wait for that. You go to my website, you'll see another hoodie up there. Went into our chain. When you see the one say Nuck of You Buck, I like, that's got it created. When you see that one, like, okay, it's ready to order. I'll switch everything, and then y'all can place those orders. You can get the hoodies, and we'll be out here. I got to get me one, too. You know, I got to get me I got to get my wife one. I already know she's going to want one. So I had to get my hoodie and get her one. So I'll be doing one of my lives in a knuckle of you buck hoodie. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, so the hoodie's coming really, really soon. Give me a couple days, if that. And we'll change that out and go ahead and put it on there. But uh, hopefully I enjoyed this message, man. It was 
good spending time with y'all. Uh, good to laugh with y'all. Good to you know share about escaping the narcissist. You're dealing with narcissist abuse. And now let me put it up there again. You're dealing with any kind of abuse, domestic violence, or anything like that. 1 800 799 SAFE, 1 800 799 7233, and National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, three digit number they have now 988 988. You can text or call that number, that 988 number, if you're dealing with uh, thinking about you know what you shouldn't be, but if you are. Don't do it. Call that number. Get some help. All right. Did y'all enjoy this message? Hey, Tyree. <laughs> did y'all enjoy this message? Uh, and next week, Wednesday, I'm not sure because it's, I know it's right. Isn't it? Uh, let me see. Let me check my calendar. Isn't that right before Thanksgiving? I don't celebrate Thanksgiving, but uh, yeah, it's right before Thanksgiving. So I'm not sure if I'm going to do a live. I know people be traveling and doing different things. So I might just do an upload. I'll see. I might do like a 30, 40 minute upload. But it's going to be a, a, a premiere, so I'll be in the chat. You know, Shannon will be in the chat and stuff. Uh, but that's what I'm thinking about doing. So uh, so I might not be a lot. I'll see. Yeah, I want a live. I might do something small. I might be one of them uh, Solomon Goes Rogue live. I do a live. It won't be a message. It'll just be Solomon Goes Rogue. So if y'all want to uh, <laughs> do a Solomon Goes Rogue, Rogue uh, live on next Wednesday, let me know. I'll see, you know, and I'll talk to God, see if I'm going to do the live. But if not, like I said, I'll do a 30 to 40 minute upload and it'll be a uh it'll be a uh a whatchamacallit a uh a premiere. So I haven't did a premiere in a while, so it'll be some kind of premiere uh that way. So either way, I'll do something on next Wednesday and then hey, we're gonna keep on moving, keep praying, keep moving around and keep figuring this thing out, y'all, because narcissist abuse is real, definitely real. So we gotta keep each other in prayer, keep each other lifted up, and uh Thank y'all again for being here. Let's pray so we can get up out of here. You know me, I start getting hungry, so I got to go take my shower and eat. <laughs> All right, y'all, let's pray so we can get out of here. God, we just come to you praying, just saying thank you. Thank you for this message. Thank you for everybody that came into the live, whether they came in, you know, did uh, a comment, a sow to seed of time, sow to seed uh, of money. We just thank you for everybody that came through. Also, thank you for the people that's going to watch this replay. Uh, they're dealing with narcissism and trying to figure out a way to escape. We pray that you give them the gumption, give them the the the, the faith that they need, give them the uh, the help they need to be able to get out of their situation. If it's a family member, maybe it's a friend, and maybe it's just that season where their friend is just going to be their friend just for a season, just to help them out. We pray that the right people come into the right place to be able to help these people get out of the situation. If they're already out of the situation and working on the healing, we pray for continued healing, continued success. And continue figuring these things out, like how do we fit back, you know, in, in into the world, into society, and become, you know, basically ourselves again. Because we we'll never be the same, but we we all trying to figure out, you know, how we cope and deal with things after narcissism. abuse. So we want to pray that we continue coping and continue healing, because healing is a everyday, a everyday thing, a everyday struggle. It's not something that's, you know, a one day fix all type thing. So. I'm, I'm still working on my healing as well. So we want to pray for continued healing. I want to pray for all our brothers and sisters that are represented here. Pray for all the families that are represented in this in this live. And the families is going to be represented watching the replay. We want to thank you for the continued growth on the channel. Uh, as we continue to grow and people continue to come around. And we, we're just thankful. There's so many things we can thank you for. If I had a thousand tons, I couldn't thank you enough. It's just so much that is going on. And thank you for me being able to share testimonies Uh just with my brothers and sisters, just let them know you're real. You're real. You're not Buddha. You're not one of these statues that just sitting there. I can actually talk to you, have a conversation, and you answer my prayers. You know what I'm saying? It might not always be yes, but you're going to answer my prayers with a yes or a no. So I'm thankful for just, just finding you and being more open to the, you know, uh, being a, a, a child of Christ. So it's just awesome. So thank you for everybody. Thank you. You know, we want to pray against the sick and the shut in. Pray for people that's dealing with sickness, whether it's cancer whether it's the flu, COVID, or whatever it is, we want to pray against against them. They're dealing with these things. I want to pray for all our brothers and sisters that couldn't make it here tonight and that's going to watch the replay. I want to pray for them as well as they you know come around and watch the video. Hopefully they can laugh and then learn as well, just as we did tonight. And then we want to pray for the children, oh, hello, Father. The children that's all represented, but then the children that's, you know, just around that we've got kidnappings and child uh, trafficking and all kinds of things that's going on as a high alert. So we want to pray that people are safe when they're out of these stores and these restaurants and paying attention to their surroundings, uh, just be on high alert and, and pay attention to what's going on around you at all times. So we thank you for this time, this opportunity just to share and come together and, and 
you know, the uh, the internet and everything held up, delighted and all that. So we thank you for this time that we're able to come together and share and laugh and and you know just break bread with our brothers and sisters. So this we ask in your in your son Jesus' name, Amen, Amen, and Amen. I'm thirsty after that one. Like I said, thank y'all again for being here. It's always happy to see y'all. I'm always happy to see y'all come through. Thank y'all, you know, for telling people about the channel or you follow me on TikTok and stuff like that. Thank you for showing love over there. And, you know, and don't forget, I'm still a, I'm a real estate agent. So if you're looking to move to Texas or move anywhere, hey, just reach out to me, see if I can help you. Get, at least give me an opportunity. If I can try to help you and, you know, help you find, you know, a real estate agent in your area, whatever the case is, and give me an opportunity. I appreciate that too. So, Thank y'all, you know, for being here and, you know, staying, you know, y'all just stay for the prayer. Thank y'all for that, too. Let me scroll up, see if I missed anything. I don't think I did. If, you, if you're if you new here, this is your first time here, welcome, welcome, welcome. Subscribe to the channel. Turn on all notifications. That way you don't miss a thing because I'm live every Wednesday, 7 p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time. And then I drop videos all throughout the week. Follow my TikTok as well. That's why I post a lot of my videos as well, the little shorts and stuff. And I go live on TikTok sometimes, separately away from YouTube. So check me out over there as well. All right, let me see. My wife say, uh, please be safe if you're traveling. If you are in isolation, know that you are loved and not alone. Amen to that. Jodan, uh, appreciate you so, so much. We appreciate you too, family. We appreciate you. God bless you. Let's see, fam, Jam say some of us are not mature enough to wear those words on a shirt because we need to be delivered. It's me. I'm some of us. <laughs> okay, Jack. Hey, okay. I, hey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, fam, being honest, she says she is some of us. She cannot wear that shirt, Nuck of You Buck, yet. Can't wear that shirt. And I'm, you can get one of the other shirts, Jam. You can get the one Narcissus if you survivor, or you can get the one parental alienation is real. Don't yeah, stay away from the nuck if you buck because we don't want you out here bucking <laughs> or nucking. We don't want you doing none of that. So yeah, you can get <laughs> you can get the Narcissus if you survivor, or you can get the other shirt. Yeah, I don't want you nucking and bucking. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you're funny. <laughs> oh man. All right, job. Let's play a little music. Jam, you funny. You cracked me up. <laughs> you cracked me up. That was fun. That was hilarious. I get it. Get get one of the other shirts, Jam. Get one of the other ones. All right, let me get this off of here. Let's play a little music. And hey, I'll see y'all next time. Be safe. Uh, the holidays come around. You know, y'all traveling, doing things. Be safe and everything. You know, uh, we'll see what's going on, you know, throughout the week. Shannon will be live uh, Saturday. Yeah, right, Lyrics is nut and buck spiritually, not physically. <laughs> exactly, Lyrics. That's what I'm talking about. Spiritually. <laughs> Jab is like, look, I just want to keep it real. <laughs> hey, Jab, I appreciate you keeping it real. Trust me. That's why I say go get one of the other shirts. You want to get a shirt? You want to show some? Go get another shirt. Get the Narcissus Abuse Survivor or get the Parental Alienation is real. That way you ain't got a nut and buck. <laughs> Y'all crack, y'all funny, man. Y'all funny. All right, y'all. Uh, <laughs> this one right here, Jam. So you can get this one. Narcissus abuse survivor, or you can get this one. See, this safer, safe tone. Parental alienation is real. You ain't gotta get the nuck of you buck. <laughs> Jordan say, I am doing the nuck of you buck. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right, y'all. I'll see y'all next time. God bless y'all, and I'll see y'all next time.